Welcome to Warn, today's news is. ISRO to usher in a new era of satellites with electric propulsion. Indian Space Research Organization, IRO, has been working on a new propulsion system that is set to usher in a new era of cost-effective satellite launches. Known as Electric Propulsion, EP, system, this technology converts solar energy into electrical energy which, in turn, is used to change the velocity of a satellite in space. It reduces the use of chemical propellant in a launch vehicle. EP system was first used as a technology demonstrator in GS-80, 9 or the South Asia satellite launched on May 5, which was PM Narendra Modi's brainchild. Currently, a 2, 0, 0, 0, kilogram insat slash GS-80 class communication satellite carries 800 to 1000 kilograms of chemical propellant. This chemical fuel is required for transferring the communication satellite from the geosynchronous transfer orbit, where it is placed by a rocket, to the geostationary orbit, 36,000 kilometers away from the Earth. It also helps in orbit correction and maintaining a satellite on its path for its life duration of 10 to 12 years. However, the new electric propulsion system reduces the usage of chemical propellant to just 100 to 200 kilograms as the former serves as the backup power for correcting the orbit of the spacecraft. The EP system gives small but accurate thrust to a satellite in its orbit. It can be used for course correction of a satellite during its life duration, said a top source in IRO. The EP system basically converts solar energy into electrical energy and then kinetic energy by generating thrust that propels a satellite. The system just needs a solar panel and components for charging ions, he said. With the new system, we can reduce the quantity of chemical propellant carried on a satellite and thus carry a heavier payload to space, said Dr. K. Sivan, director of Thiruvananthapuram-based Vikram Sarabhai Space Center. Center to make indigenous navigation system mandatory for new aircrafts. The center is soon expected to issue the notification to make Gagan, the indigenously developed navigation system, mandatory for new aircraft registered in the country from January 1, 2019. This would enable the country to break free from the overdependence on the international tech regime led by the Global Positioning System GPS, of the United States and Global Navigation Satellite System GLONASS, of Russia, while also plugging the gap in covering the equatorial region. Speaking to Express, sources in the Ministry of Civil Aviation confirmed that Gagan, or GPS-aided geo-augmented navigation, jointly developed by Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, and the Airports Authority of India, is ready for full optimization and has obtained an international certification for approach and precision landing operations, APV-1-15, over the subcontinent. The Director General of Civil Aviation has conducted rigorous ground tests for two years meeting the prescribed international civil aviation requirements, said ISRO Chairman as Kiran Kumar adding that Gagan compliance would very soon be made mandatory for aircraft. Any Gagan-enabled receiver will provide accurate positional information which can be relied upon, he said. India is only the fourth country in the world to have the capability to provide certified satellite-based augmentation services over its flight information region, thus elevating it to the group of elite nations that can provide a platform for transition to satellite-based navigation. Beyond independence, Gagan also claims to have several operational advantages that would make it essential for the aircraft flying here, said officials. According to them, the system would give airlines the ability to derive maximum flexibility, capacity utilization, fuel consumption with direct routing and lower carbon footprint, which would encourage regional operators to make their aircraft Gagan ready. Iranian army kills scores of possibly Pakistani terrorists near Pak border. Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps IRGC, forces killed a large score of Sunni terrorists in the southeastern provinces of Sistan and Baluchistan, Thursday, the Tasnim News Agency reported. According to the statement released by the Iran-based news agency, the IRGC attacked a group of Sunni Pakistani terrorists in the southeastern part of the country bordering with Pakistan, killing a number of militants, while also confiscating a large amount of explosives and ammunitions. The IRGC's Quds base, operating in Iran's southeastern regions, told the Tasnim agency that clashes between their forces and the terrorists broke out inside the Kasra Alkand County during the afternoon hours on Thursday. The security forces have destroyed an explosive-laden device with 600 kilograms of explosives, and have confiscated five bombs improvised for suicide attacks, more than 700 kilograms of explosive materials, tens of thousands of cartridges, and a number of weapons, 
a statement from the Iranian Ministry of Defense read. Relations between Iran and Pakistan have remained tensed ever since Islamic terrorists from Pakistan killed nearly a dozen Iranian army soldiers. Overdependence on CPEC will put PAC's economy at risk, warns IMF. The International Monetary Fund, IMF, said the outlook for Pakistan's economy was favorable, citing Chinese infrastructure investments among reasons for growth, but warned of risks to recent progress. Confidence in insurgency hit Pakistan is growing, with the IMF saying last year that the country had emerged from crisis and stabilized its economy after completing a bailout program. However the IMF warned in a report on Friday that macroeconomic stability gains have started to erode and could pose risks to the economic outlook. Pakistan's outlook for economic growth is favorable, with real GDP estimated at 5.3% in 2016-17 and strengthening to 6% over the medium term on the back of stepped-up China-Pakistan economic corridor investments, improved availability of energy, and growth supporting structural reforms, the report said. However, macroeconomic stability gains have begun to erode and could pose risks to the economic outlook, it added. Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif vowed to boost the long-depressed economy after winning a third term in 2013. Encouraged, and undeterred by domestic debt of $182 billion, Islamabad set an ambitious yearly growth target of 5.7% for 2016-2017. The World Bank predicted 5.4% growth by 2018. Hopes are pinned on the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, a $46 billion initiative by Beijing that aims to link the Asian superpower's Xinjiang region with the Arabian Sea through Pakistan. The plan encompasses a series of infrastructure, power and transport upgrades that Islamabad hopes will kickstart the economy. But experts say the deal is opaque, and much more transparency is needed before they can assess any impact for Pakistan, including, for example, whether the $46 billion is an investment or a loan. Kurdos to promote Valkyrie, Mako drones in Paris. Kurdos Defense and Security Solutions will unveil a new class of unmanned aerial systems XQ-222 Valkyrie and UTAP-22 Mako at the 2017 Paris Air Show held in June 19 to 25. The Valkyrie and the Mako are highly maneuverable, stealthy, able to fly at near supersonic speeds, and can carry and deploy weapons or surveillance systems. The larger Valkyrie, measuring in at roughly 30 feet in length, has a range of more than 3,000 nautical miles. Most important, Kurdos UAVs are aligned with emerging military strategies because they are reusable and lower priced in the $2 million to $3 million range. The Valkyrie was recently announced by the Air Force Research Labs, AFRL, at a presentation on its low-cost attritable aircraft technology, LCAAT, program at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. If you team up a bunch of these aircraft with an F-35 or an F-22, or some of our surveillance assets, you'd basically be able to cover more space at a lower cost point," Bill Barron, AFRL LCAAT project manager, told the Dayton Daily News at the May 9 event. The Valkyrie has been in development since July 2016, when the U.S. Air Force awarded a contract to Kratos to develop the LCAAT. After a less than two-year design and development effort, the Valkyrie is scheduled for its first flight in spring of 2018. The Mako is already operational and is scheduled for follow-on test flights, where it will carry sensors and be teamed with manned aircraft, in June, July and August of this year. India and Australia share expertise on C-17A Globemaster III. A Royal Australian Air Force, RAAF, C-17A Globemaster III and crew have conducted a one-week visit to their Indian Air Force counterparts. The visit to Hindon and Agra Air Force stations, held from the 12th to June 16 this year, included a series of briefings and presentations on each nation's respective Globe Master capability. Group Captain Adam Williams, Officer Commanding No. 86 Wing, leader of the Australian contingent said the Globe Master was a critical capability for both countries. Our air forces operate the Globe Master within the same region, but our workforces seldom have opportunities to meet face-to-face, -face, GPCAPT Williams said. By visiting Hinden, we're able to build a professional relationship that will benefit how we each operate the Globe Master, and lay a foundation for any future operations we're called on to fly together. India and Australia have each used the Globe Master to support humanitarian assistance and disaster relief operations. In February 2016, an IAF Globe Master visited RAAF base Amberley en route to provide humanitarian supplies to Fiji in the wake of Cyclone Winston. 
while the model of Globemaster is exactly the same for both countries, GPCAPT Williams said Australia benefited from an opportunity to fly on board an Indian aircraft during their visit. We were fortunate to experience an Indian Air Force mission to let in the Himalayas, which is 3,200 metres above sea level, GPCAPT Williams said. The lower air pressure at these higher altitudes affects the aircraft's performance significantly during landing and takeoff. We're grateful for the opportunity to see how the Indian Air Force operates into airfields at such elevated environments, and will apply their experience to how we fly the Globe Master. The RAAF contingent was also able to share its own experiences in operating Globe Masters over the past 10 years. Our briefing to the Indian Air Force included a summary of how we conduct ultra long range missions, and our experience of air to air refueling between the KC 30A multi role tanker transport and the C 17A. GPCAPT Williams said. We've also shared our experiences with Plan Jericho, such as how we're applying advances with information and communications technology to the Globe Masters mission. Australia has a fleet of 8C, 17As, operated from RAAF base Amberley west of Brisbane. Four aircraft were acquired between 2006 and 2008, with further examples being acquired in 2011, 2012 and 2015, two aircraft. The IAF currently operates a fleet of 10C, 17As, acquired between 2013 and 2015. India may sue Polish firm over armoured recovery vehicle contract. The Indian government may file a lawsuit against Polski holding Obrani of Poland, formerly known as Bumer, for allegedly not honouring a contract to supply full technology transfer for key systems of armoured recovery vehicles, or ARV, to be manufactured in India by state-owned Bharat Earth Movers Limited for the Indian Army. Despite an undersigned contract worth $275 million signed in January 2012 for supply of 204 ARVs, the Polish company has not given critical technology transfer for ARVs to be manufactured by BEML in India. The Polish company also refused to open performance bank guarantee of $100 million for technology transfer of critical systems for ARVs, and despite several reminders, FO has refused to honor its commitment, according to an Indian Ministry of Defence official who spoke to Defence News on condition of anonymity. India is now actively pursuing to file a lawsuit against FO for not honouring its commitment, and the Indian government will now recover liquidity damages, the MOD source added. BEML bagged an order from the MOD in November 2011 to produce 204 ARVs with full technology transfer from FO for the Indian Army's Russian-made T-72 main battle tanks. Under the contract, 50% of the ARV was to be homemade by BEML, and FO was to provide full critical technology transfer to crucial subsystems, according to a BEML executive, who spoke on condition of anonymity. We are now actively seeking other alternatives to complete this program. Per the contract, each ARV would cost $1.4 million and be supplied within three years. The currently Army faces an acute shortages of ARVs, an Army official said. ISRO set to launch backup satellite to replace IRNSS, 1A. In an attempt to keep India's regional navigation satellite system fully operational, the Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, is preparing to launch a backup for IRNSS, 1A, one of the seven satellites in the constellation, that has been hobbled by the failure of the atomic clocks on board. The PSLV C-39 mission, scheduled for late July or early August, will carry the new satellite named IRNSS, 1H into orbit, K-7, director of Vikram Sarabhai Space Center, told the Hindu. Replacing IRNSS, 1A became a priority for the ISRO after it was confirmed in January this year that all the three rubidium atomic clocks on board had stopped functioning. The space agency had decided on launching one of the two spare satellites after initial efforts to restart the clocks failed. ISRO to launch CARTOSAT-2E on board PSLV, C-38 on June 23. Now, Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, has scheduled the launch of the Cartazit 2E satellite on board its proven workhorse polar satellite launch vehicle, PSLV C-38 for June 23. Preparations are on full swing as the vehicle is assembled and integrated with the satellite. Called the Eye in the Sky, Cartazit 2E satellite is an advanced remote sensing satellite or Earth observation satellite having surveillance capabilities with its multi-spectral optical imager and panchromatic camera. It will be launched on board PSLV, C-38 on June 23, ISRO chairman as Kiran Kumar told TOI. It is similar to the Cartazit, 
two series satellites launched in June last year and February this year, he said. It may be reminded that the two previous Cartasat, two series launched include Cartasat, 2C on board PSLVC, 34 on June 22 last year and Cartasat, 2D on board PSLV, C-37 on February 15 this year that deployed a record 104 satellites in sun-synchronous orbit. Maiden test of anti-radiation missile soon. The Defense Research and Development Organization, DRDO, is readying to conduct the first test of indigenously developed new generation anti-radiation missile, NGARM, which is capable of destroying enemy radars, tracking systems and communication facilities. Defense sources said preparation for the test is in full swing. The air-to-surface missile having a strike range of over 100 km will be fired from Sukhoi, 30 MKI fighter aircraft soon. Development of the missile has been completed. It is being integrated with the launching platform. If everything goes as per plan, the maiden test of the weapon system would be carried out in November, said a defense official. Indian Navy commissions another water jet fast attack craft in TARASA in its folder. Tarasa, the last warship of the four follow-on water jet fast attack crafts, built by the Garden Reach Shipbuilders and Engineers Limited, GRSE, was formally handed over to the Indian Navy on Thursday. Tarasa, named after an island in the Andaman, is fitted with three water jet propulsion systems powered by marine diesel engines generating 2720 kilowatt of power. To provide artillery fire support during attack missions, it is also fitted with CRN-91 indigenous 30mm gun. At a program held at Garden Reach Rear Admiral VK Saxena, in, retained, Chairman and Managing Director, GRSE handed over Tarasa to the Commanding Officer of the Ship Lieutenant CDR Praveen Kumar. Rear Admiral Sandeep Nathan EVSM, Chief Staff Officer, Technical, of Western Naval Command carried out final inspection of the ship prior to its acceptance by the Navy. It may be mentioned that Tarasa has the honor of being the first indigenously built warship to have successfully completed weapon trials prior to its delivery to the Indian Navy. This activity is normally undertaken after the ship is delivered to the Navy. With the handing over of Tarasa, GRSE has once again demonstrated its commitment to strengthen the maritime security of the country. TITAGARH Wagon Switches Track to Build Ships Titagarh Wagons has transformed from being a wagon maker for the Indian Railways to also being a ship builder. By bagging the 175, crore order from the Indian Navy for the construction of four vessels, it has scored against defense PSUs like Goa Shipyard as well as private sector shipyards like Reliance Defense. A company official told Business Line that it was a tender-based procurement where eight companies participated. Titagarh Wagons was the lowest bidder. The other bidders included PSUs such as Garden Reach Shipbuilders and Engineers, Goa Shipyard Limited and private sector shipyards such as Tebma Shipyards, Reliance Defense. The company is among the largest private sector railway wagon manufacturers in India, and has been manufacturing wagons, coaches and specialized equipment for the railways, in addition to building Bailey Bridges. Last November, Tidagarh Wagons participated in a tender floated by the Indian Navy for the manufacture of vessels and won the 75, crore order. In 2016, we expanded our footprint in the defense sector by obtaining our registration with the Indian Navy for vessels up to 120 meter length. This was followed by our first contract with the Indian Navy for two 1000T oil tankers. These two vessels are being specially designed to support INS Vikramaditya, Indian Navy's flagship aircraft carrier, the official added. Russian, Indian defense ministers to meet next week. Indian Finance and Defense Minister Aaron Jaitley will meet with Russian Defense Minister Army General Sergei Shoigu during his visit to Russia on June 21 to 23, a diplomatic source told TASS on Thursday. Indian Defense Minister Aaron Jaitley will arrive in Russia next week, he will participate in a meeting of the Russian-Indian Intergovernmental Commission on Military and Technical Cooperation together with the Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu, the source said. He added that Jaitley and Russian Deputy Prime Minister Dmitry Rogozin would take part in the first meeting of the Russian-Indian Intergovernmental Commission on Scientific and Technical Cooperation. Thanks for watching. I hope you like this news. Please share your views in comment box. Please like and share this video. Press subscribe button and bell for auto update to you regarding my channel World Action and Reaction News, Warn.